live. We're live. We might even be live. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we are in the last mile here. I'm just going to stand up here for a few seconds because what you need after a long week is a little bit of sugar and some free to -its. We've got three sets of free to -it cookies left. Who wants them? Come on. Okay, I've got Jessica. Who else? Come on. Come. Yeah, not people who already have them. We need new people. Did you already have some, Jessica? Okay, Jessica. And she's eating for two anyways. All right, Katie. Come on, you know you want to. It's there we go. Okay, we've delivered the cookies. And we have some work to do this morning. So we're going to get started. I do want to know, is anyone... Um, as tired as I am today. <laughs> I'm gonna take that, that we did it right, okay? That's my takeaway. If you are tired this morning, then you you did the conference correctly. <laughs> I do also, once again, need to just thank our sponsors quickly. Uh, our champion sponsors, Emerald Data Networks, Equinox Open Library Initiative, Evergreen Community Development Initiative, Pennsylvania Integrated Library System, Pales, Spark, um, and our ally sponsors, Biblio Commons, Cool, Markive, Mobius, Kipu, Sage Library Systems, Stack Courier, and Unique Management. Yay! Just a quick housekeeping thing. Um, any of you that would like to um, leave your lanyards or your badge holders, um, we do reuse them for next conference. You don't have to, you can take them with you and you can bring them back to the next conference, um, but you can leave them if you want. There's a little round table with a box on it. So you can just leave them there and I'll, I'll make sure they get to where they need to go. Uh, we do have a few community announcements. Um, this has been a big year um, for retirements and we do have some retirements happening um, in our community from our partners. And so we just wanted to recognize all the um, the effort and time that these individuals have given. And we know that once you're an Evergreen community member, you are always an Evergreen community member. There is no leaving the, the community. So just because a retirement doesn't mean that, you know, we don't expect them to still be hopefully engaged and maybe come to another conference because... But Amy Trelaga, Bibliomation, Elaine Hardy, Pines, Ron Gagnon, Noble, Diane Dispro, Regional, help me, Missouri Evergreen, okay, I'm going to tell the wrong consortia, and Ben Lynn, who I believe helped um, name Evergreen, Evergreen, yes, name Evergreen, Evergreen, so I don't know, do you want to stand up so we can formally recognize and... <laughs> Okay. And just thank you and best, best of wishes and luck for a very, very happy, well-deserved retirement. There are a few of us that are probably a little jealous, <laughs> not speaking for myself, of course. Um, I did want to start today just with a few moments of gratitude. With all the things going on in our lives, in the world, I, sometimes I think it really does help to just acknowledge and think about the things that are going well and going right and the things that we are just appreciate and more importantly, letting those people know how much we appreciate them. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't do a shout out to the Worcester Public Library and particularly Jason Homer, who's the director there, who really joined the local planning committee and organized everything from the Woosox to a social um, the night before and just ran back and forth with speakers and lanyards and post-it notes and just, you name it, the Worcester Public Library has it. And I'm so grateful that he is part of CW Mars. Um, also, Alex Rakowski, 
who is the director of Hitsfield. And I know Alex, you're here. So thank you. Um, thank you for saying what do you need and what can I do? And just being you, being at that registration table at 7 a.m. and um <laughs> organizing a dine around and a and a pub crawl and having evergreen community members say to me, how do I know him? Who is he? Should I know who he is? <laughs> he is mine. You can't have him. But I think he will come back and he may be joining us for future conferences. So <laughs> also, John Amundsen, who is behind the curtain in the back row. I have such great staff and John is one of those people who just gets it. He created the facilitator guidelines. He tested the zoom. He, you know, he came in this morning and I'm like, John, I cannot think I need this link and I need it on the hotel computer and I need to print this document and I don't want to type that. And he's like, eh, tiny URL. Here we go. And I'm like, thank you because my brain is just tired today. <laughs> um, everyone needs a John. <laughs> and um, I also just want to also thank the AC hotel. AV, all right, take that however you want. Um, like I said, I'm not responsible for most of what comes out of my mouth this morning and it's all you all's fault. <laughs> um, I do also wanna say thank the AC Hotel, AV staff, Chad, Jared, you're amazing. I consider you my new very close friends and um, thank you for dealing with my own Zoom anxieties. Um, and I have to say, watching a few of our developers try to connect to our systems made me feel a little better about myself sometimes. <laughs> so thank you for that. Developers, you know who you are. Um, and also my staff, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you did. <laughs> uh, tables, you know, Zoom, um, coming out late night and <laughs> actually being a lot of fun. So that was nice. I think we've spent more time in Worcester. We work in Worcester, but I think we've spent more time in Worcester than we've ever spent in Worcester. So, I mean, that was actually kind of really nice. Um, the AC hotel Wi-Fi. thank God we did not break it withstood our bandwidth demands and yeah, grateful, grateful conference committee for all your help, wisdom and support. Amy, Ruth, Debbie, Gina, Jennifer, I hope I didn't forget anyone. You're amazing and thank you for all you do. <laughs> our core committers, Jason Boyer, Galen needs no last name, Jeff Davis, <laughs> Bill Erickson, Jason Etheridge, Jeff Godin, Shell Morgan, Mike Rylander, Chris Sharp, Jane Sandberg, Jason Stevenson, and everyone who works on software improvements, documentation, accessibility, bug reporting, testing, squashing, all of those things, thank you. Everyone who came, created presentations, organized interest group meetings, and joined us both in person and remotely. And then for this amazing, awesome, evergreen community, who is so welcoming, kind, and so much fun. I think honestly, the software is the software, but the community is like just above and beyond treasure. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, for those of you who are willing to step out of your comfort zones, and there's a lot of opportunity for that in this community, um, for creating challenges that benefit the community, and then when it's time to pay the piper, when it's time to get on that stage, realizing that you're not doing this alone, turning around and finding all these people behind you, supporting you, concerned about you and wanting, <laughs> wanting you to meet your challenges and the goals you've set for yourself, but to know that you just don't have to do it by yourself. I mean, that's huge. For those who leave, but never leave. Once a core committer, always a core committer. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> For Blake and his magic and his board game leadership, Psst, he's always the spy. <laughs> For Mike Raylander's commitment to share his mad karaoke at every in-person conference going forward. You missed it this time around. There's next time. And then I just want to say how grateful I am to be able 
to work at a place where I can take the time to gather, to laugh, and to talk about the hard stuff with all of you at opportunities and venues like this. And I think all of us here probably appreciate it even a little bit more because of not being able to do this for four years and for being able to be here today and just realizing like how much that means, how much energy, how much recommitment and how much, you know, um, you get back from just what you put in. So thank you. And now, hold on. I'm going to give you a board update. <laughs> I change hats, but I don't know my hat. Um, the Evergreen Project Board represents the interests of the Evergreen Project and is responsible for enforcing the Evergreen trademarks, discussing issues escalated from committees or other subgroups in the project um, that require a decision by informed consensus, issues that do not fall into the purview of any other established committees or subgroups, Issues of strategic as opposed to tactical importance for the project that require leadership and vision from above the team or sub project uh, and sensitive legal and personnel issues, which also may require research or discussion to protect the interests of the project. The board is elected by annual vote by the members of the Evergreen Project um, and made up of those who have made direct contributions to the code documentation or committees or those who are employed by institutions running Evergreen. So we do want to give a big thank you to Debbie Lukenville from Mobius, who served from 2020 until 2023. Thanks. Debbie, do you want to stand up? <laughs> she is rotating off the board this year, but I know she'll be back. <laughs> and we also wanted to welcome our newest board member, Dan Moore. Dan, are you here? Yeah, in the back, yes. Dan's an ILS system administrator at KCLS, so welcome. We're excited to have you on the board this year. Uh, I also did want to acknowledge and thank all of those board members whose term ended since our last in-person conference, also during our pandemic. Chris Sharps, of Pines, Holly Brennan of the Homer Public Library, Jessica Wolford from Bibliomation, Chris Burton, Niagara Falls Public Library, Lynn Floyd, Evergreen, Indiana, and Anna Gobin, Evergreen, Indiana, Tiffany Little, Pines, Chris Owens, Cool. <laughs> um, and I think that those are all the terms from during the time from the last conference. This year, uh, the board will be focusing on updating our bylaws and getting all references of the SF <laughs> SFC off of our website, I promise. Um, <laughs> we'll also be working on our creative plan, uh, sorry, our creative plan, our strategic creative plan for the project, especially now that we are our own nonprofit and really trying to focus on community goals and priorities, um, so which is timely. <laughs> And I did also want to mention that next year, next spring, there will be three seats that will need to be filled. So I encourage you all to consider possibly getting involved in this type of a role. And next, we are going on to the conference committee update. Wow, well, you are very tall. Okay. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Gina. I work at Bibliomation as a Evergreen System Specialist. I have to remember that uh, full title every time. Uh, and I was the chair of the conference last year. Um, I'm on the standing committee currently. And this is gonna be really quick uh, because we still have um, decisions that need to be made about next year's conference. So I'm really just here to remind you that uh, there will be a post-conference survey uh, so please fill that out. That will be emailed out to uh, all the attendees. Uh, there's a lot of information in there and feedback is always uh, really, really appreciated to make decisions going forward about what we're going to do for 2024. Uh, so I will be doing the best I can and everybody on the committee uh, to work together to make those decisions and inform you uh, if you are on those evergreen email lists. So if you are not, uh, please go to the website evergreen-ils.org or just you know, ask one of the, the other Evergreen members to get on that emailing list so that you could be informed uh, once we do 
make a decision. Uh, if you are interested in joining as a conference uh, committee member, uh, I'd be so happy. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, but we'll also put out some more information like that. Uh, there's a lot of things that went into planning this one, uh, especially with an in-person I haven't actually uh, done before. This is actually my first. Actually, uh, who who else has their first uh, in-person conference this year too? Wow, okay, so a, a lot more there than I thought. So yeah. Um, so it is uh, really cool to uh, be together again after um, you know uh, seeing everybody in squares online. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a lot of uh, planning that went into this. So uh, another round of applause for the gratitude of those who planned uh, this. This has been an amazing experience. So before I close out, um, if you are interested in getting involved again with the uh, committee, there's a lot of different things that go into it. There's like making the logo, um, doing programs, getting the schedule together, getting surveys out and forms, um, sponsorships. There, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And even if you don't know what you want to do, um, you could just come to a meeting and see what we can offer. So uh, just again, make sure that you're on those email lists. We'll inform everybody as soon as uh, decisions are made. So thanks for your time. Okay, um, so good morning, uh, everybody. My name is uh, Galen Trout, and I'm uh, with Equinox uh, Software. Um, and yeah, well, we maybe okay. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, take. Uh, 20 seconds uh, to see if this uh, can be sorted out. Otherwise, I can operate uh, without uh, slides. Um, because I. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chad. All right. So let's uh, start over. Um, I'm Galen Trollton with uh, the Equinox uh, Open Library Initiative. Um, I've been uh, involved uh, in the project as a developer uh, for a little uh, bit. Uh, I'm also a core uh, committer. Um, and first off, I just want to say that it's so awesome to have the opportunity to see so many of you back in a person. Um, you know, obviously the past um, four years uh, have had other dark uh, mo moments and I'm sorry. Um, Four years of little squares on uh, the screen on the screen is no substitute um, for uh, being among uh, the uh, community. Um, okay. All right, I'm getting all of uh, Chris uh, Sharp's uh, luck today. Clearly, uh, let me. See if I can get this uh, sorted out so I can actually advance. Yay, uh, progress. All right, so since uh, the uh, previous online uh, conference, um, we've had uh, uh, four uh, evergreen releases, um, the major release of uh, 3100, um, and uh, three maintenance releases, um, which included uh, security uh, releases. Um, bear this number four uh, in mind. Um, going by uh, the numbers, um, we've uh, got uh, almost a thousand uh, commits uh, to the main branch. Um, and to explain what's going on, um, Git as the version control system that the project uses 
um, divides its streams of uh, commits into branches. Um, historically, the project's uh, tip or development, uh, you know, primary branch uh, has been called uh, master. Um, in the next uh, week or two, we'll be uh, re uh, uh, renaming that uh, to main. Um, so we, we've had 38 patch authors uh, during that period, um, 52 people who have tested uh, and signed off on patches, which, by the way, that number is a lie. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, in many, like in other circumstances, you can most easily report on what um, is um, uh, available in the uh, in data. Uh, data. Um, so I know that many, many more people uh, have been involved um, in testing, but have not necessarily shown up uh, as people who have signed off uh, on patches or been otherwise uh, known uh, to the surveillance empire uh, that is uh, the Evergreen uh, bug uh, tracking system. Um, and, you know, six Evergreen releases, if uh, you count uh, the beta and uh, release uh, candidate. So um, one of the things um, that uh, the project uh, does uh, is um, sets up uh, events, week-long events, um, to bring uh, people together and look at the queue of um, pending contributions to the code and test and review them. So at the moment, um, we've been organizing them into bug squashing week uh, and feedback FS. Um, but the general notion is we spend a week um, drag together as many people as uh, possible. Um, Burlap uh, Sachs uh, may be involved in uh, a few cases um, and go through uh, the pending pull requests, review them, test them, uh, and get um, uh, them emerged. Um, and speaking on you know, Jeanette's theme of uh, gratitude, Particularly gratitude should be expressed now to uh, to, uh, to Taryn McKenna for organizing uh, the bug squashing weeks and feedback FS um, for uh, many years at this point. A round of applause, please. So, um, you know, there was also uh, an event that we called a feedback fest. Um, I suspect at some point um, we're going to um, drag Elaine Hardy out of uh, retirement uh, to construct uh, an authority of record, um, uh, possibly 1X, uh, 1, uh, 1XX um, Feedback Fest, 4XX Bug Squashing Week, or uh, the reverse. Uh, I look uh, forward uh, to uh, the you know, 50 message long uh, thread and the, uh, the mounting list uh, to make that uh, distinction. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you know, but uh, suffice it uh, to say that um, the uh, feedback fest or bug squashing weeks are uh, a mechanism by which to concentrate our uh, effort into particular uh, periods of time. Um, we should also make um, acknowledgement to uh, the people uh, who help stand up uh, the test uh, systems uh, that are used uh, during these weeks um, with a particular shout outs uh, to my colleague, uh, Jason Boyer of Equinox, and uh, to uh, Blake uh, Graham Henderson of uh, Mobius. Um, yeah, I apologize. And uh, a separate round of applause for Tiffany, please. And uh, I think it also warrants uh, a very brief uh, digression. You know, we are a, a community of uh, values, and one of those values does include a proper uh, attribution. And it's very important um, that, you know, and I'm also making reference uh, to Kathy Lucier's uh, presentation yesterday, it is important that we keep track, we observe, and uh, we acknowledge, and inevitably we'll miss uh, people. Uh, but to make sure uh, we fix that uh, when uh, that happens. Um, and of course, you know, bug squashing that week um, wouldn't happen without everybody who's uh, been uh, involved um, in testing. Um, I won't read uh, the names, uh, but each and every one of you now has a, a City of Worcester approved, uh, you know, a smiley face. All right, so um, there are 
Um, yeah, in recent years, um, we've moved away from a model of the release manager being a single a person to establishing release teams. Um, so um, to uh, acknowledge other release teams for 3.10, which was released, and 3.11, which is uh, coming. Um, yeah, I'd like to acknowledge Taryn McCannon, Michelle Morgan, Jane Sandberg, um, and I won't pretend I know which way is uh, towards Brenton, but hi, hi, Jane, if uh, you're out watching. Uh, Jason, uh, Blake, uh, and Michelle uh, for 311. So thank you uh, very, very much. Um, and also uh, this uh, year, uh, or you know, since uh, the previous uh, conference, uh, we have uh, some new code and documentation patch authors uh, to acknowledge. Um, so, um, you know, I've, um, you know, yeah, included images of, you know, one of uh, their uh, accomplishments. So Scott Angel, um, who, uh, as of yesterday, um, now has a, a patch uh, in place uh, to implement a, re uh, a reveal password button in all login screens, staff uh, and uh, patron uh, facing. Um, Britta Dorsey, uh, who uh, contributed uh, documentation and who's one of uh, the people whose first uh, contribution was accepted during this uh, very conference. Um, Stephanie Leary, uh, who, uh, in addition to um, presenting, I think, 37.17% of uh, the presentations uh, during this uh, conference, um, you know, is is, uh, of course, a very strong advocate uh, for accessibility uh, in Evergreen. I'm very pleased uh, to have her as a colleague uh, at Equinox, and she will uh, do amazing work uh, for the project. Um, so the contribution I chose to highlight was, well, a highlight uh, fixing uh, the uh, color contrast uh, in uh, the search uh, term highlighting a uh, feature. Um, all right, uh, Llewellyn Marshall of NC Cardinal, um, who um, this patch in question uh, is um, you know, adding uh, destination and source addresses uh, to the stock transit slip uh, templates, um, but he is um, shaping up to be involved in all kinds of things, uh, geographic, um, uh, geographical, um, including adding Bing uh, as part of uh, the uh, coordinate uh, uh, you know, lookup. Um, and uh, with a uh, you know, patch in flight uh, about uh, teaching uh, Evergreen how to take geographic um, distance into account when routing hold the request. And by the way, uh, one of the benefits of the conference is you get to hear th things uh, through conversation. I now know why in context, geographic uh, distance actually uh, makes uh, sense uh, as opposed to, to uh, say, uh, the state of Maryland uh, situation where nobody shoots folks uh, across uh, the bay you know, using a cannon. Um, and also um, Susan uh, you know, Worston of uh, GFLS, I believe, um, who's um, you know, emerged as a documentation uh, contributor and a patch of reviewer uh, and a tester. Um, so mentioning uh, in this case, her uh, contribution of uh, the Open Athens uh, 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 configuration or uh, documentation uh, to Evergreen. Um, and again, if I've missed uh, somebody, um, my apologies. Um, and so, um, the Evergreen community has a, a set of uh, core committers. These are the people with um, the privilege, right, and responsibility to be the ones to uh, do the final review of code uh, and add it uh, to Evergreen. Um, so at the moment, core committers are chosen by consensus and vote uh, among the existing uh, core uh, committers. Um, and this year, um, as of um, uh, yesterday, we have a new one, uh, Gary Collum of uh, the Kenton County uh, Library. And and uh, I think uh, speaking to one of Kathy's points yesterday, 
we can anticipate um, uh, additional core committers uh, being uh, named uh, over uh, the next uh, year. So um, what has uh, all this uh, effort uh, led uh, to? So brief and very brief uh, recap of uh, what's uh, shown up um, in 310. Um, you know, I will not uh, pretend that I have even uh, a tenth of uh, the coolness of uh, uh, the Ruth uh, and Andrea show, so I won't. I won't even uh, try it. Um, but uh, I think uh, a couple of things uh, to point out as kind of a broad uh, themes is Open Athens as an example of uh, third-party uh, integration, um, and uh, it's also quite interesting with respect to uh, some of the general authentication problems uh, that Evergreen and libraries have to deal with uh, nowadays. And of course, um, our long march up uh, the JavaScript uh, and framework uh, treadmill continues uh, with uh, very you know, uh, significant progress in converting more of the staff interface to Angular. So an experimental uh, Angular circulation interface, um, significant work uh, from Angular acquisitions, um, and yeah. Uh, uh, advanced shipping notifications, which has very little uh, to do with uh, with acquisition with Angular, but is important uh, for acquisitions. Um, I will mention, by the way, that Angular acquisitions um, is a very good example of how different elements of the community can come uh, together to make uh, things happen. Um, since um, that particular project. Um, is uh, the result of work um, sponsored by ECDI and performed by, uh, by Equinox, work uh, done uh, directly by Bill Erickson of uh, King County, and significant uh, work um, by uh, Tiffany Little of uh, GPOS. Um, and I, do, I want to make a, a particular shout out uh, to Tiffany because her work uh, on the load uh, mark order records um, is um, actually a stunning example of a first time major uh, patch uh, contribution. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, to include uh, a couple of screenshots, um, you know, an example of, um, you know, what uh, a purchase uh, order screen now looks like, uh, as well as um, pointing out uh, some of uh, the work um, that we'll be doing in the accessibility front uh, to deal with better color coding and better ways of uh, presenting um, state um, that don't involve uh, colors. Um, and of course, uh, Angular circulation as a thing that is available in 310 to experiment with will continue to be uh, an, an experimental thing in 3.11. Um, and then by hook or crook, uh, bribery may be uh, involved. Uh, let's uh, see if uh, we can get this um, past the definition shot line uh, for 3.12. So in Evergreen uh, 3.11, um, there's uh, a bunch of things uh, that are still in flux. Um, so um, I will be on an airplane at various points, so I will not be able to give minute by minute updates. But you know, there's uh, you know several features that are themselves still in uh, flight. Um, but some things that we can anticipate uh, being there is um, Angular 15 and the Bootstrap uh, 5 for the Angular stuff uh, catalog uh, are now in place. And one of the things we can look forward to particularly as uh, we get to bootstrap 5.3, uh, I, I believe is more uh, ability to uh, improve for the accessibility of uh, the web uh, uh, staff uh, client. Um, queued record ingest um, so that yes, you will get the ability to uh, update that uh, genre, you know, authority record that is linked to literally 50,000 uh, bit records and be able to um, just have it do its thing without having to worry about it. Um, we will, at the long last, have uh, the ability uh, to, uh, you know, put in uh, a detailed uh, explanation of why you should not actually use uh, the all parts or any parts um, option, uh, as well as uh, the ability to 
hide it uh, entirely. So in flight, but a very, very decent uh, chance uh, that uh, that will make it in. Um, search uh, suggestions are getting more powerful. Um, by the way, an announcement. Um, there will be an Easter egg in one of uh, the upcoming uh, slides. Um, I do not have any more to it uh, cookies uh, to throw uh, your way, but uh, you know, if uh, you figure it out, give a shout, um, and uh, you will uh, get uh, you know the joy of uh, being uh, first uh, to uh, the punch. Um, but also, of course, more work uh, in angularization. So, um, one of uh, the things uh, that I like uh, about what's coming in did uh, you mean is uh, the ability to. Um, make more use of authority of records. So what this uh, does is it means that authority of records and linking between the uh, uh, headings will no longer just be a matter of uh, the browse interfaces that patrons may or may not be using, but mostly are not using. Uh, you know, the 4XXs and the 5XXs will now be available to help uh, enhance um, you know, search uh, suggestions. Um, but in addition, the did you mean a feature uh, is uh, extended to um, uh, include support uh, for multiple words as opposed to its uh, previous uh, single word uh, version. Um, you know, another thing uh, popping up uh, will be um, a uh, staff view um, to uh, bring back uh, a nice uh, accurate, uh, you know, list of, uh, you know, fields. Um, for those people who I uh, don't, um, you know, who I didn't uh, learn uh, Mark as uh, their first uh, language. So um, another thing that the community does is uh, the Hackaway, um, which is uh, an opportunity for developers and documenters and other uh, contributors to get together in one space um, to uh, in a intentionally small-ish uh, uh, forum to work to, uh, together on projects, to get code uh, pushed, to plan and to plot. Um, with of course, one of the disadvantages of the past uh, three years being that getting that together in a single small space was not possible. So, you know, there had been um, online hackaways, uh, including uh, one in, uh, in October, but just like this year, we're in, back in person, uh, for the main Evergreen Conference. Uh, I'm happy to announce that thanks to the efforts of Broken Hamby and the Indiana State Library, we will be back um, in uh, to Fort Harrison um, uh, either the uh, in October or November. Uh, Broken has sent uh, a survey. Um, please, uh, please uh, fill it out. Um, And I figured that if we do this enough, and uh, eventually we'll be able to just buy uh, that uh, place, and it uh, will uh, become uh, the project's um, you know, ongoing uh, headquarters. So um, some things uh, to look forward to after 3.11, and this is all perspective uh, stuff. This is more about potential themes, uh, not uh, concrete things, but security improvements. That's a big uh, theme, and by the way, um, after these uh, updates uh, and the IG updates, that will be one of uh, the uh, topics of uh, the last uh, component of uh, this uh, conference. Um, potentially some significant architectural changes with um, the Redis-based uh, open source uh, that Bill Erickson has been working on. Um, angularization uh, will continue because ultimately um, death to Dojo. Since uh, we can't, uh, since uh, we can't really do death uh, to mark uh, to mark uh, just yet, we can at least uh, knock off uh, Dojo. Um, we can expect uh, significant work on accessibility improvements. Um, hopefully, getting Angular circulation uh, across uh, the finish line, and then baking it into Amber so that we have to retrain circulation staff just once, uh, at least for a, a year or two. Um, as well as uh, you know, uh, hopefully working on actually getting rid of some of the things um, that are no longer applicable to uh, Evergreen and that have been hanging on uh, for arguably a bit longer than they should have. But so on the development front, you know, 
I think and hope that this year will also be uh, a period of, of reflection um, and that um, the, you know, that people will take uh, Kathy's uh, message yesterday to heart. Um, so, you know, we need to figure out what we can sustain as a least tempo. Um, you know, we have not um, uh, collectively succeeded in monthly maintenance releases, and it would be good to get back to it, not necessarily monthly, but at a predictable uh, you know, interval. Um, there are uh, discussions and potentially some hard discussions we need to have uh, about community expectations, um, standing requirements to well, harken back uh, to uh, my own presentation uh, a couple of days ago, um, but how we can help each other, both as a community of individual librarians uh, and technologists, um, but also as um, a community of institutions, including libraries, consortia, heads, you know, service providers, as well as potentially other partners and funding agencies uh, that uh, we may consider uh, pursuing. The Evergreen Project is a 501c3 organization, um, independent of uh, an umbrella. We have uh, resources. It's a time for uh, us to get serious about using uh, those uh, resources. Um, and in general, squaring uh, the circle uh, about doing things versus just expecting that uh, they uh, will get done as if uh, by magic and not uh, uh, just uh, Blake's uh, kind of uh, magic. So um, you may notice that I've been doing this uh, update uh, entirely alone. Whereas in previous years, you know, uh, uh, I had been commonly uh, bringing uh, people uh, back up, um, and I'm doing it uh, this, um, you know, solo this time, basically uh, exercising uh, a point of uh, personal privilege, uh, so that I can end uh, this uh, presentation on a bit of a personal note. Um, I think what Kathy presented uh, yesterday um, is a hugely important uh, message. Um, and, um, you know, you know, as she said, I can't all die on uh, the backs of uh, my cats, but, you know, I would like to uh, inject uh, a bit of a literary note, um, to this presentation. Um, you know, some of you may know, um, a detective series, uh, the uh, Inspector Armand uh, uh, Gamache uh, books uh, by Louise uh, Penny. Um, so one of um, the quotes uh, from um, Still Life that has long resonated, uh, resonated uh, with me is this, the four th things that lead uh, to wisdom, namely the four sentences uh, that we learn to say and mean, I don't know, I need help. I'm sorry, I was wrong. So where I'm going with this is it's important to imagine, or to acknowledge rather, that this is always a collective um, work and that there are, are always many hands involved in, in, in everything. For example, simply the slides for this presentation are not remotely just the uh, creation uh, of me, you know, I can point to explicit uh, contributions uh, from Jason Boyer, from Roken Hamby, from Andrea uh, and uh, Ruth uh, and others. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's true. I've also been doing a lot and have been privileged uh, to be in a position to do so. But I think it's important to acknowledge um, that there are systemic issues um, that uh, the community should uh, deal with um, and that we collectively have a responsibility to our th ourselves and to the users of uh, the uh, software to figure it out about how we can better come uh, together as a community uh, to get the work uh, done, to plan the work, um, to fund uh, the work, uh, and uh, to ensure that um, each of us has the ability to be seen in our contributions, uh, but that none of us need to feel overwhelmed uh, by them. So, you know, the I need help uh, here 
is both, uh, I think, yeah, obviously personal to me, um, but I think also uh, a collective, um, you know, statement uh, for uh, all of us that we do need help, um, but the benefit of uh, this strong and awesome uh, community is that we also have the capability to provide that help uh, to each other. Um, so I will finish uh, with the one cat of mine who has not yet uh, shown up uh, on a slide at this uh, conference, uh, Lucifer. And uh, thank you uh, for your time and attention. And if you have any concrete questions that you um, want to ask of uh, the developers and documentation writers, well, a good many of us are uh, here. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. I had the privilege of introducing each of 10 interest groups. We are very, very privileged and lucky to have this many active interest groups that are meeting regularly and that you can be a part of just by showing up on one of the calls and seeing what's going on or by following so many of them, we have um, information available on the wiki. So I will ask, I'm just going to call your names alphabetically by interest group. And so that's all I'm here to do is to call your names and I'll talk just for a minute about Kat when it's my turn. But so let's start with Acquisitions with Tiffany. Thank you to all of these interest groups leader, interest group leaders, if I don't get to say that at the end. So thanks, Tiffany. I was hoping you weren't gonna call me first because I wanted to see what other people said. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Tiffany Little, I'm the acquisition specialist at Pines, and I lead the acquisitions interest group. Um, we meet on the second Wednesday of every month at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and anybody who is interested in acquisitions is always welcome to come, um, especially because I tend to find that acquisitions is one of the smallest like groups at any given organization. Whether you're supporting at the consortial level, you might be the only person that knows anything about acquisitions. Or if you're in the library, you might be the only person doing it. So just having someone that you can ask questions of because everybody does it differently and there are no stupid questions truly. <laughs> so um, I, like I said, I was gonna copy off other people. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. So, um, but yeah, and I am always more than happy to answer any questions that I ever can. So thank you. Me again, but I think I've talked enough about cataloging. There's a cataloging interest group. Um, I do want to take just a moment to say we meet second Tuesdays. We have a wiki. There's a, a, a a mailing list that goes out. You can be involved in that. I want to say that this group proves that catalogers don't work in silence. If you know a cataloger, you know that's not true anyway, but we certainly don't work alone and you don't have to. So this is a very vibrant group. We're growing. We have subcommittees. The authorities working group has come out of that. We have the bib frame study group is going to come out of that. So we're very active. Please join us. I am going to say just one more time how very honored and just thrilled we have. I have been personally to work with Elaine. If you Many of you were not at the cataloging interest group, and we forgive you for the conference. But if you missed it, we 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 uh, honored Elaine this week with um. I sent out messages to many of you, and you sent messages back to me, words that we use to describe her. And we put that together in a very nice um, image that looks like a cat, like like her avatar, actually. So, one more time, thank you to Elaine. And now Diane Dispro to talk about circulation. I am Diane Disgro from Scenic Regional Library in Missouri. I am the circulation coordinator. I'm also on the executive board of uh, Missouri Evergreen. So I bring you greetings from the Show Me State. Um, we first, our first library adopted Evergreen in 2012. Um, and by the end of this year, half of the libraries in the state of Missouri will be members of the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. 
Yes. yes. This is a great thing. It is a totally resource sharing consortium. Um, so we currently have about five, not five, <laughs> four million items in our collection that is shared through um, 185 service sites. Uh, it, it is absolutely exciting. Uh, my library, Scenic Regional, um, serves three counties. We have nine branches. It's the largest member. And our smallest member has one full-time staff member and two part-time staff members. So we are bringing these resources through the Evergreen ILS to lots and lots of people. I do have notes about what the circulation interest group met and talked about. And I'm not going to say that Jennifer lied. However, the circulation interest group does not exist does not exist. The uh, library staff that are using Evergreen, most of them are what? Circulation staff. And for some reason, um, they don't band together. I don't know. But there is no ongoing monthly, quarterly, and well, there is an annual meeting at the conference, <laughs> the circulation interest group. Um, and none of the six people that attended the meeting wanted to step up and take this on as a project. So that's something to just keep plugging away at, organizing, unionizing the circulation staff. There you go. Um, so I just want to report a couple things that, that circulation talked about. Um, there were a couple bugs that uh, they will, we're going to be asking everybody to add heat to. Uh, there's some general concern, and not just at this meeting of six people. Like, there's some general concern about what the um, receipt templates will look like and how they will function where they're no longer workstation specific. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Taking notes. Um, uh, the evergreen documentation is great. There is a request that maybe there could be a at the beginning, at the side, an extra link or something to, for a getting started guide that would be just a short, this is what you need to know now. And when you need to know more, you can dig into the rest of the documentation. Um, we're excited about the work that uh, Stephanie Leary will be doing to create a design system so that there will be uniformity um, and so that there will be more, just hit the enter key to get something done instead of finding the submit button or the okay button. That's good accessibility and good uh, uniformity, you know, consistency. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and we're all, this is something that probably this community can't do anything about, but we're all stressed out about text and email messages not reaching the patrons because of what the carriers are doing with our messages. It's, it's a very big problem for, for all of us at circulation when the patron says, I never got my holds notification and now you've sent it back. And we can see in the ILS that the message was sent and we have to say, I'm sorry, we, be, we should just call you every time. That's the end of my notes. Thank you and go and love it, love a circulation person and, and tell them to unionize. Thank you, Diane, and thank you for the challenge to the community. Um, in lieu of there not being a circulation interest group, I would encourage us to use the, the general list serve. It's there. And, and because circulation people are such a big part of our libraries, then they should be a big part of that, that general list serve. Next, Consortial Leaders Group, Katie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the circulation, but whoa, still have that on the brain. 
Um, the consortial leaders group meets quarterly, thanks to our fearless leader, Benjamin Murphy, who kind of gets us all together um, and makes sure that we have reminders for meetings. Um, we did meet uh, this year at the conference together, which was delightful. Uh, my first in-person conference as a consortial leader. And we focused our, our discussion yesterday around personally identifiable information, um, what are consortia collecting? How are we um, making sure that our members are complying with what we want them to collect? Uh, what are the state requirements uh, either to collect or not to collect? And how does that affect our risk uh, in a variety of ways? Lots of discussion about uh, staff accounts. And Benjamin, you're here. Um. <laughs> um i am i'm happy to do it uh and and we talked a little bit about fee structures uh which which was very interesting to all of us and i will share these notes uh that i took with the consortial leaders list we have a number of consortial leaders who are not going to be with us at the next in-person conference unless they come back as alumni which i would encourage um, but I want to say to all of you, uh, whether you are in a consortium that will have a new leader or you're an outgoing leader, um, please do encourage new leaders to reach out to the list, to join the list, to reach out to Benjamin, to reach out to any of us individually. One of the most important things that I did uh, when I was new a year ago was to meet with the former heads of my consortium. Um, but Benjamin reached out to me and, and asked if I would like to chat, and it was a wonderful experience and bringing me into this group, um, as well as uh, the ICOC, which is the Consortium of Consortia. Uh, so please take advantage of uh, the expertise and, if nothing else, the uh, commiseration of this particular group. Thank you. Alphabetically next would be Dev, but since we had the Dev update, Jason Boyer is getting a pass today. But I will say on his behalf, Jason does facilitate that group. It meets every second Tuesday following the cataloging interest group. So please check out those messages. Documentation, Debbie. Oh, yes, please, Jason Boyer. <laughs> now documentation with Debbie. Let's go digging. Uh, so I already gave a whole five minute lightning talk on this yesterday. So um, I'm Debbie Lukenville. I'm the Associate Director for Open Source Initiatives at Mobius and I facilitate the documentation interest group. Uh, and we meet Thursday, first Thursdays at 1 p.m. Central uh, time. <laughs> My time. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and so we'd love to have, you know, if you have done documentation, if you are just like wondering what the documentation interest group does, just show up. Um, we're happy to have all new people and any form of documentation uh, that you have and might want to contribute. Don't worry about the, you know, converting. We'll do that for you. So. <laughs> new devs with Taryn. too short <laughs> okay uh i'm taryn i uh coordinate the new developers working group we meet the third wednesday of every month uh, at 3 p.m eastern um and uh if you haven't attended one we kind of alternate between um actually working on bugs together as a group usually just one that a member um, puts forward that they're stuck on and want more eyes on and we also have guests uh, come in, like a Badger, different developers, and have them come talk about specific topics. Um, some of the topics that we're going to be uh, looking for speakers to talk to us about are um, how to use the existing APIs. And uh, once the new API development gets started, we'll uh, ask questions about that, too. Um, we're also interested in learning the various steps and actually building a release. And we are interested in learning all of the different facets to how translations work. Um, so I'll be pestering people for that. Um, our big goal for this year is to uh, pull together all of the various developer documentation that lives in the wiki and in 
uh, various um, YouTube videos and old conference, uh, old conference notes and blogs and try to pull that all into the, de the new developers wiki. We have an outline started um, and our goal is to get that all fleshed out by this time next year. And so we would love help with that. Um, and we'll probably be reaching out with questions as we review the documentation that we find and try to update it. Um, so that's it. Come see us. Outreach with Rogan. I first want to thank Taryn for putting this at the correct height. Um, unlike the other groups, outreach is a little different because we aren't centered around functionality of Evergreen, but we talk about Evergreen. Uh, we talk to internal and external audiences. We proselytize, we summarize, and we just try to talk it up as best we can because we think we're pretty awesome. And I want to drop a few names here, and I want to start with somebody who's unfortunately leaving us he didn't think about how his retirement would affect me, but Ron ha uh, has been a valuable member of the team for ages. He has been a workhorse putting out the press releases, and on a personal level, he's also been a pleasure to work with over the years. So I'd like for him to get a round of applause. Um, and as much as we're sad to see him go, we have some new people have, that have just come in the last couple months, and I'm going to call them out here in part and hope that by mentioning them, they'll be too ashamed to leave us at any point during the year. Um, Stephanie Leary of Equinox joined us just in the last couple months. She came in with a ton of energy, which I love, and she said, is it within the mandate of this group to update the website? And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, and she's starting up great work there. Olivia Scully of Bibliomation has just joined us as of the conference. She hasn't even had a chance to meet with us yet. But we're really looking forward to having you on board. And one place we've been lacking is somebody to have the bandwidth to do social media for us. We're still building that up, but Catherine Nesbitt of NC Cardinal is on board. Her, she's already had an impact, and we're looking forward to a lot more over the year. Uh, we meet the first Wednesday of every month at 4 p.m. Eastern, because that's my time. And if you are somebody out there who's going, you know, I don't, coding's not my thing. I don't really know if I can do documentation. Well, if you can read and write and type and help categorize things, we can find work for you to do. That's all. Thanks, Rogan. Next, reports with Jessica. Back down to short person level. All right. So, hi, I'm Jessica Wolford of Bibliomation. I coordinate the reports interest group. Uh, we meet the last Wednesday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we meet over over Zoom or whatever uh, thing we happen to have access to. Um, but anyway, we talk a lot about the reporter. And boy, can I get started talking about the reporter when I get going. Um, but any way that you get information out of Evergreen is germane to the conversation that we, so that we have. Um, next month, we'll be talking about SQL. So if you have read write access to your, or, or write access to your database, um, you can come and join that conversation and learn so, and learn how to kind of get started learning SQL from Rogan and Chris Sharp. Thank you both for coming to help us out with that. Um, and the following month, I, I had a, a conversation with Stephanie Leary, and she will be coming to talk about to us about uh, improving usability in the reports interface, which which we're very excited about. <laughs> um, and uh, and we did a um, uh, at the Hackaway a little. Uh, Andrea provided us with a sort of little preview of the angularization of the reporter. So I think that's what the conversation will be focused on there. 
Um, we've also been working on our wiki quite a lot in the last year and trying to gather some sample reports. We, unfortunately, we don't have great ways to share templates across consortium. And uh, you know, if you're new to Evergreen, this is, can be like a really big stumbling block. So we're trying to make like a little library of templates that if you're new, you don't really know, know how, to, how to work with the reporter, you can kind of get you started. And all you really need to do is take a screenshot of your display cup fields, take a screenshot of your filters, post them on the wiki, you're done. Um, so we might have a few working sessions to help people get started with that. I now know exactly how to um, request wiki edit access. So uh, we'll have a session on that. And then I will disappear to have a baby. <laughs> but Elizabeth Davis will be taking over for me, if, at least for a short period of time. So thank you very much, Elizabeth, for uh, stepping up to, to run the group. Um, I know she she expressed an interest in uh, looking at the report's documentation because there's still some Zool screenshots in there, so those need to be updated. And um, if you've got other ideas about things you want to talk about in relation to reports, please let us know. We have a mailing list. We can talk about anything you want <laughs> in terms of getting data out of the system. So thank you all. Hope to see you there. I think I'm the in-between height. Thank you, Jessica, and congratulations. Let's congratulate Jessica. All right. Hang in there, only two more to go. Chris Sharp, sysadmin. Um, hi, I'm Chris Sharp. I'm the Pine System Administrator at the Georgia Public Library Service, and I have in one form or another been leading the sysadmin interest group for, I don't know, ever since 2010 probably. Um, and it doesn't meet monthly. We, we've tried meetings in the past and they just sort of fell apart. So, because we're, you know, it's like when, when you're the implementation person at your library, you don't have a whole lot of extra time probably, uh, consistently anyway. Um, and, uh, but, System administration can mean several different things. It can mean, um, you know, server administration. It can mean being in a library and doing all the settings and doing all the setup for staff client type stuff. Um, and I have always been, you know, I, I try to be uh, open and generous with my own knowledge about how this all works. And I just sort of want to put it out there that I am available if you want uh, you know, to bounce ideas off of, of uh, things. And I'm always excited to have this, the sysadmin interest group because um, I feel like sysadmin gets sort of taken for granted uh, with all the talk about development um, because implementation, if, you know, if we're not implementing the software we're all writing, then it doesn't really happen. And those interests are not always exactly aligned. So I, I think it's, uh, as a person with feet in both camps of development and sysadmin, I, I, um, I just wanted to sort of point that out and kind of give a shout out to the sysadmins out there who uh, are underappreciated sometimes. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you to all sysadmins. Last but not least, our newest interest group, Stephanie Leary and User Interface. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad to be here so that I can bring my total percentage of programming up to an even 37.5. Um, I'm Stephanie Leary. I'm at Equinox. I'm the front-end developer. I will be leading the new user interface interest group. If any of you would like to co-lead, please let me know. I'd be delighted. I am delighted at the number of you who have expressed interest. Um, those who couldn't make it to our 8 a.m. kickoff meeting on Thursday have tugged my sleeve and pulled me aside and emailed me and said I want to join. Fantastic. So my update for this group is that we now have a mailing list. It is on the wiki. It's on the Evergreen website. Please go join the mailing list. And I will send out a message to the main mailing list to that effect and to organize a time for us to have our first meeting. Thank you. Before I turn the microphone over one more time, I want to thank all the interest group leaders. We met for the very first time. We had an interest group leaders interest group meeting while we were 
over here because there's so many of us. One of the things we talked about is kind of standardizing how you can communicate with each of us. So we're going to have a shared calendar, which will be coming very soon. We want to thank the Evergreen Project for giving us access to Zoom accounts so that we can all use Zoom for our meetings if we choose to. And then also for giving us a place to store our videos. We're working on that. And we've got several options. And Stephanie will be pulling on you to help with that to get our videos in place. So thank you to the project for supporting our Evergreen, uh, our interest groups. And thank you to the interest group leaders for making this happen. All right, Jeanette, I'm turning it back. So we have an activity planned, but do you need a break? Do you need a, yeah, okay. So let's take, a, um, what time is it? Uh, it's 1014, so. 10.30, you have to come back. That's the only caveat with the break. <laughs> okay, so 10.30 for the last hour and a half. <laughs> and we lost half of the people, but that's okay. So if everybody wants to grab a seat, you're going to need a seat for this part. And I promise we will hopefully have some time at the end for you to connect some more. <laughs> and I promise it won't be four years before we do this again. <laughs> I mean, world willing. <laughs> I probably can't promise you anything in this, <laughs> can I? <laughs> So if you don't have a seat at a table, there are open chairs, especially in that front row, <laughs> but you do, you will want to sit with a group. Otherwise you'll have to work all by yourself. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I understand if you have to go though, I don't want to, I know travel being what it is. But trust me, you'll want a chair. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started once um, Blake finds his seat. I love it when people I know are the one. No. <laughs> Sorry. The power of the microphone. Okay. So just a few minutes to kind of wrap up our whole conference. It's a lot I know that you're taking home with you. There's a lot that of different and various presentations that you're able to uh, participate in. And um, we did kick off this conference with a rather sobering and perhaps terrifying keynote, depending on your role with systems and security. Um, but, you know, the very important topic of data security and what that looks like when you're in the war room, in the front line, on the trenches, trying to communicate out with your users and um, dealing with data loss potential and definitely loss and access of services. Have any of you gone through some sort of um, ransomware, phishing, denial of service? Have any of you, I see hand in the back of the room, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. We also talked about the importance of accessibility, standardizing our software, updating and creating more and more accessible documentation, and in general, making it easier for newer people to navigate that want to be part of Evergreen. And we also talked about burnout. I think if we're honest, we're all probably experiencing some burnout symptoms. I mean, we just went through a really stressful global pandemic, which isn't really quite done. And most likely some of us have some sort of PTSD. 
before we could really even process and heal from that experience, we've got the stress of the great resignation, retirements, turnover, vacant positions, staffing challenges. And then we've got some really major stressors in our libraries around censorship and collection challenges, polarization, attacks on the very values we stand for, privacy, freedom to read, access of information. As a consortium leader, I worry about a data breach and the impact that might have on my staff, my libraries, and our patrons and their trust. I worry about burnout for my staff. I worry about my library directors and their staff. And honestly, I worry about librarianship in general and that we have enough people coming in to fill and take on leadership and step up and do the work of those that are now it's time for them to move to on. And I also have worries about the sustainability of the Evergreen software. I worry about our project developers and now also their cats. And those of you in the community that really step in and do the lion's share of the work, because we need you, but we also need you not to burn out. <laughs> I truly, truly believe that we are at a pivotal moment in the project and that the actions that we take or don't take today will determine the future success or failure of the project. So I'm gonna say that again. Today really determines our future. As a leader of a large consortium with a very strong commitment to open source and very limited options on who could host an ILS of consortia of our size, we, we and I have a very large vested interest in the success of this project. And I had to stop and ask myself after yesterday's session, am I, am I doing enough to ensure its success? Is my organization, is my staff? And I'd like to turn that around and say, are you, is your organization, is your staff? The success of the project ultimately comes down to the engagement of the community, the heart of Evergreen. And it will take all of us because we together collectively are Evergreen. We are open source. So there are post-it notes and markers on your tables. Um, and I'd like you to uh, have some conversations, talk about some of the things that we heard at the conference today. Um, and also, okay, did I do another terrible faux pas joke or is there just, okay, someone's stealing post notes, thank God. All right, that's on Jennifer Weston causing disruption in our activity, but that's fine. <laughs> so what, what I want you to do is talk, <laughs> talk about what you've learned, talk about what your takeaways are, but talk about the project, the Evergreen project, and what are some of the actions that you think we need to take now, and now being the next year, um, you know, really high priority actions to ensure the health and longevity of the project, and be as specific as possible. Write them on those post-it notes um, and have those conversations um, at your table. And I'm gonna give you it's 10.38, so let's go till 11. So that's like 22 minutes if I can still do math. Um, and then we'll regroup and hopefully uh, share some of the things that we're hearing at the tables. So it's 11 and I hate to stop these conversations. So maybe we're just consider pausing these conversations because I do think they are things that will be discussed a lot during um, strategic planning. And if you're interested in any of that work, <laughs> uh, we have a place for you. So um, I have a microphone. Does anyone want to volunteer to talk about some of the things that you've hopefully written on those post-it notes at your table? I know someone wants to go first and you don't want me to call on you. Blake, Blake's making eye contact. Oh, nope. <laughs> oh, Debbie. Okay. 
<laughs> and you get to touch the mic. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Diane started us off with a question about bringing this information back um, and how do we, you know, convey this to our frontline staff and libraries. Um, thank you. <laughs> how do we convey this to the, the folks at those, you know, I'm the only person at this library uh, folks um, and especially circulation staff and helping them understand like this, <laughs> you know, what we, um, how, what we do and how we feel like here. Um, and so then we riffed on all sorts of ways to engage and um, bring in circ folks. Um, so we talked about having a conference theme of celebrating circ staff. Um, uh, we have some projects for outreach, sorry, Rogan, <laughs> um, of something like a maybe a quarterly um, uh, just like, here's a little thing the cataloging is doing, or here's a little thing about a new feature, or here's a little, you know, some new documentation. So something that wouldn't be like one person's responsibility, but kind of just a little way that maybe for a few minutes, you know, those folks could take not, not a whole day, they don't have to travel, um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, um, conveying that conferences and interest groups are not just for administrators. Um, and uh, that was it. Oh, social media. We also have our social media, right? Question and answer of the month, like that we could do on email. Um, feedback fest from frontline folks. So that's our alliterative contribution today. So that was kind of what we riffed on. The, uh, oh, mini conferences also, maybe. <laughs> that would be for frontline staff. Yes. That's it. Okay, so our table, um, you know, almost uh, covered our, uh, you know, uh, covered our table in post-it notes, uh, but um, we came up with about uh, three regional themes. So one was kind of uh, project level, strategic E uh, sorts of uh, things like um, figuring out what the project uh, could do to start writing uh, grants. And if only there were a bunch of people in the uh, community who knew things about writing uh, grants, I wonder where we could find uh, such uh, people. So, um, but in addition to that, um, things like um, looking at uh, the funding model for Evergreen, the Evergreen Project as a nonprofit organization, which at the moment largely subsists uh, from net, re uh, net re uh, revenue from uh, the conferences, um, but there are other ways to do it and reasons to consider those other ways. Um, but general outreach, including possibly to library trustees um, as a hidden you know, a constituency who um, would typically have no idea what uh, the Evergreen iOS is, but maybe we want to try to make them learn uh, a bit about it. Um, you know, and uh, another idea we had is conducting a census of uh, the Evergreen uh, project or maybe adding something to Evergreen to, uh, on a purely opt-in basis, ch check a box uh, when you set up an, an Evergreen system to say, here we are. And then now we can send uh, the uh, welcome uh, wagon. Um, you know, other things were on uh, the way uh, along the lines of, maybe there are consultants we can get uh, possibly for free uh, by, uh, leveraging uh, connections or by paying for them for things like ongoing risk uh, risk assessments, um, accessibility audits, um, penetration tests uh, for the software, and so on. Um, but also on the security front, embracing things like um, you know helping avoid um, uh, attacks or limit exposure by doing work uh, to add, say, multi-factor authentication to Evergreen. Um, and then, you know, finally, you know, some things to uh, specific projects uh, to make it easier to work with Evergreen, um, like um, 
fun, you know, you know, adding import and exports of uh, report templates. Um, big pardon? And uh, documentation and, and potentially doing things to, you know, build the Evergreen manual directly into the, the software and set it up um, so that it uh, can be customized for local policies, but also more easily shared. So in other words, um, you know, Blake has, uh, you know, uh, plans uh, that he'll finish by Thursday uh, to, you know, grab uh, the Pines manual and the Sitka manual um, and uh, the Missouri Evergreen, uh, you know, guidelines and so on, and fold it all, all into our shared uh, documentation. So, you know, um, you know, I'm also, you know, posting uh, a picture of our uh, table to Twitter, uh, and I would encourage other uh, others to, um, you know, um, forget about Elon a, a moment and consider uh, doing something uh, similar. But anyway, that's it uh, for uh, our table. All right, um, so who is our next uh, lucky uh, winner? Apparently the shadow organization said that I had to talk. <clears throat> our first post-it was I have spoken, Kathy, Kathy Lucier. But, but from there, um, we kind of talked about two main themes. Uh, the first one being more technically focused, talking about things like um, enterprise SSO, MFA, security, like giving a one-stop security dashboard overview. What, what are your people doing? Who's got credentials? Did somebody log in from a foreign country that you don't recognize? Um, automated data cleanup to a higher degree than what Evergreen is currently doing. Um, infrastructure, fund the unsexy things. Um, remove old code, don't let it hang around. And um, as far as that information um, cleanup, sorry, I should have sub-organized these better. I was a terrible cataloger, you guys. Um, for PIA, you know, if you don't store it, you don't have to purge it. So, you know, really think hard about the kinds of information that you are retaining, that you're gathering even, and, you know, does it serve your purpose and do you have to hang on to it and how long? So that was, that was theme one. And then theme two was more about kind of like the people and, and the organizations. So things like succession planning, um, don't put everyone on the same plane, literally and metaphorically, um, Mentorship, connect new people to those of us who, you know, are long in the tooth and have been here for a while, like show them the ropes, be a welcoming organization, um, grow those people, bring in new people from outside the community, make them welcome in the community and, you know, help them contribute their brains and their ideas and their work to us. Um, maybe rethink the status of Evergreen as a solely as a 501c3. And this was coming back around to my joke about the shadow organization. Is there room to organize a separate maybe 501c6 underneath of that that can be a membership organization and that can be a source of revenue for the community to do collective projects? Um, and like, recognize people. Um, we've been doing a lot of that here today, but, you know, keep that going, like give people awards, you know, give people certifications, let them be uh, known as trusted community members. Um, make, if you were an administrator, I cannot, as, as somebody who used to work at a tiny library, I cannot plead this enough with you. If you were an administrator of a library group, please make community work part of your team's goals and performance reviews and make it like part of their job. Um, otherwise it is very, very hard for for them to find the time to do community work. Um, and then communication outreach, communicate the value of, of open source work. You know, a lot of these, a lot of library administrators don't necessarily understand why the open source uh, software world is different than the standard vendor community partner world. And, you know, what it means that no, you can't like put your name on a piece of software, like you can a piece of building, but you can talk about like people that you have sent, uh, people, people of your organization that have done work for this project, that have contributed code, that have contributed you know, your organization's contributed money, like learn how to talk about that um, and communicate the value of doing that. Did I leave anything out? All right, thank you. Next. Okay. Uh, our pretty much overarching theme was um, security and privacy and those go together and also two different things. Um, so, excuse me. Um, so we have two little like phrases that sort of sum up our entire conversation. So I'm short. 
Um, but one is what is the least amount of data that we need from the outset? And then after we have the data, what is the least amount necessary to be retrievable or exportable? So what do we need to put in in the first place? Absolutely. And then even once it's in there, what is the, the lowest amount of access that's reasonable for any given person? Um, and so um, along with that, we had ideas about um, like each organization is going to have uh, information that they need to retrieve for their needs. So um, having like customizable fields. So like if one um, organization doesn't want to have birth date, like the, to have the ability to just not have that turned off kind of like, so it's just not even there. Um, so like settings uh, for not having data <laughs> um, and then also being aware of what we're who we're giving access to not just like staff um, but also like the vendors like uh, like um, the uh, the things in the OPEC thank you people at my table please help me um, yes like well, no I'm not calling anybody out um, <laughs> um, patron marketing services um, and then just like uh, things in the OPAC, services that we have in the OPAC. Um, also not in the meetings. Um, did I forget anything? Okay, that's us. That was all we had. <laughs> okay. Who wants it next? We don't have a table full at all. We have, looks like five and one crumpled up. Uh, that was already solved. We already fixed Jason, all of Jason's problems. So um, there were, so much like the rest of the tables, one of the um, big things, and it's so big that we didn't really drill down into it. It's, uh, but we, this is a big conversation that we need to have more broadly and for a longer period of time. But. MFA, embracing it, and how do we do it, and what's what's the list of things that libraries will never accept as a second uh, a second factor? You know, um, do we do we say Google Authenticator or its peers is is something we you know we need to be able to push to our um, staff and patrons, or is email enough? Uh, do we trust the SMS gateways to do uh, to do that, or do we need to say if you want to use sms you're going to have to pay somebody you know a, a, a penny every 100 messages uh, that you send out so those kinds of conversations um but mfa is obviously something we need to be um really thinking about hard um the other uh, we, we did talk about pii in much the same way so i won't repeat everything that i've already already said um but one thing that Jeanette brought up, and I apologize if I seemed particularly salty about it, but I think the bigger theme is, are we doing things, are we investing our time and our effort in areas where um, that's not, we're doing things that other groups may be able to take on and do better for us. The idea in particular was discovery and discovery layers are, um, you know, are becoming much more wide, widespread, especially open source ones, and more widely used. Do we need to continue improving search um, and adding features uh, in Evergreen Core? I'm not going to answer that question here standing here, but I think you all know what I would say. But that doesn't really matter because I'm only one person. And I'm the person that happens to be doing a, a lot of that. So uh, I have a, a biased and um, uh, overly weighted opinion on that. But, um, but the intentional abandonment is really, I think, where we need to be framing that that kind of discussion and, and thinking about are there things that we can just leverage other people's work on um did that, do you want to add anything for our table i think the only other thing was is uh really kind of and i think this will be a topic at the next board discussion is you know acknowledging the value of these in-person sessions and as we try to balance um, remote and in-person events to try to consider, you know, the 
the costs, but also the huge benefits. And so just having that conversation and trying to come to a good balance of, you know, how we go forward in this world of Zoom that we live in. <laughs> There's a few tables left. <laughs> You notice who's volunteering with the mic. Um, so our, we had uh, many themes that have uh, already been covered. I think um, we we sort of went down a route where we were sharing a lot of our experiences, which I'm sure all of you were, um, and, and we're kind of focused on the ways that we communicate about uh, the things that are happening with the software, um, whether that's when we when we don't communicate and we have unintentional abandonment, which is what we don't want, um, or the the ways that the information flows through the community from the IRC discussions, the launchpad bugs, um, the listservs, and uh, the high entry bar for those of us who aren't participating in the conversation about how do we code these things, but do support these things and do make decisions about uh, what third party products we're going to get and how we're going to support our users, how we're going to train our users. Um, and the infer the need for us to do better at having uh, interaction between those different roles in our community. So I think that was anything you want to add. Okay, thank you. And and where where can we uh, where can we inject some capital to uh, make this all better? Yeah, yeah. Our group started with thinking that we need to um, add resistance under local admin or maybe Doom on the OPEC. Um, that would be quite good. Yes, um, I think we thought about if we're going to solve some of these problems, more of these problems than growing our community is an important one, getting more folks on at the group. And I've got to say, we didn't specifically say it, but our kids are really doing good things and really right. I mean, Jeanette started us with gratitude. Galen had the bravest, the bravery to be vulnerable and to say, I need help. Think of all of the communities we're in and when, like, where else are we working this well together? So in that realm, we thought about growing that with succession planning, intentional and planned redundancy, maybe a junior developer program, pulling resources to employ someone who has spoken. Um, but then we also thought about, can we involve patrons in our community? Are there some patrons that would love to test some things for us? How can we can, uh, increase that? Might that help include more CERC people? We had a plus one for the unified list of participants, a plus one about conscientious standard documentation, plus one on human connection. Building from the doom, we did talk about, can we get some of that nostalgia from the old wooden card catalog with a sexier splash page with some shared designs? Or can we make it more Google looking to ease patrons into the OPEC so that they're more comfortable? Can we integrate social media? Maybe we have a TikTok to make something cool. <laughs> or community publications, or how do we sell our community as a, use our community as a selling point for luring more people to the ILS? Maybe adding languages, maybe integrating the baskets that Cardinal made for Gibsonville. Uh, maybe thinking about staff and the OPAC views separating uh, not being the best option. Um, anything else that I've left out? A lot of plus ones, so thank you for, for that. Okay, so um, a lot of the things that you have all said, you know, being last, it, it's great because I don't have much to say. Um, one of the things was uh, sort of being a, an evergreen ambassador to the other people we work with to encourage them to participate in the community in order to grow the community. So, you know, yay ambassadors. Um, perhaps establishing yet another 
working group that focuses strictly on permissions to document what the permissions are, what they do, how they work together. Um, that, that, that's a big ask, but you know, it, it is something that, that people could use. Um, and one of the other things was that um, to have more time for the interest groups at a conference to meet together so that you have more time to one, find out who's in your room, you know, and then to really start having the discussions that an interest group can do in person rather than just online. Being a runner. <laughs> can you like sing in it or something? No? <laughs> no, do you want to? <laughs> I was seeing if you were talk or sing or something. <laughs> he was brave. He brought me the mic. <laughs> Plus one. Um, so thank you. I want to keep the post it notes. So, like, when before you leave, make sure someone at your table, if you can stick them on the, the big flip chart thingy and then um we'll make beautiful things out of them and share them with the community um and possibly you know use them when we're in our strategic planning meetings and stuff um so thank you thank you for some great ideas i also do want to say that we will be sending a survey out um to everyone who attended and i'm thinking we also really should send out a survey to everyone who didn't didn't attend to try to find out you know why and what you liked what you didn't like suggestions for next time i love the interest group thing um, you know, all, all of that, um, you'll have a chance to give us a lot of feedback. So hopefully the next one will be even better. Although how could you top this? Come on. So, <laughs> um, the other part of the, the, the activity today is just as important. Um, we need a new acronym, <laughs> save Galen's cats, no <laughs> SGC, <laughs> but it sounds like save Galen Charlton. And that just is not what we're going for here. Although we, you know, want to help you, Galen, and I don't want you to give you the Heimlich right now. <laughs> I got him choking. Um, but, you know, um, it is really important, I think, that we all acknowledge that with open source, you know, we are open source. Um, it, and I think I'm guilty of this a little bit because we do so much for our libraries that a lot of our libraries um, don't quite grasp the not having a vendor like they it's so nice to have someone to blame it just is sometimes you know and it's hard to be like oh well why does this why do they do it and it's hard to say like okay I need to fix this because I'm frustrated with it you know so it's a it's a mind shift um you know so what what can what are you doing right now are you doing too much like do you is is your biggest um thing that you need to do for the community is step back we understand are you doing could you do more are there are there places that and again this is you personally but also if you're in a leadership role your organization you know are there holes do you have staff on you know the different committees and interest groups that are active here is your organization represented is are you represented in the governance are you represented on the committees um you know, what are your skill sets? What can you do? Maybe your social media and outreach, you know, you've, you've heard, you've seen a lot of people that are doing a lot of things. Um, so are there, are there ways that you can get in, involved? Maybe it's outside your comfort zone. And I'm going to tell you, this is the safest place to make mistakes. And there's, um, there's, there, everyone is so grateful for your help. There's so much support through the IRC chats and through just the development community and the lists that you really would have to do something. I don't know what to be like for anyone to really be upset with you. <laughs> it's a learning experience and we all have been there and we all have walked into that meeting or, you know, sat in that seat <laughs> and said, you know, I feel like like an imposter like this. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what they're talking about. And we've been there and, and, you know, a lot of those people are core committers. So it, that's how it happens. You've got to take those first steps. Sometimes it, it might involve karaoke. Um, but so take five minutes or we'll give 10 minutes. Let's see. It's 1128. So um, 1140, take 10 minutes to really think about, something that you can commit to today. What, what is something you can do? What can you do to help, you know, maybe you have the skills to help with, you know, the development crisis, we'll call it. 
<laughs> which isn't a crisis, but it could be a really bad one. Um, you know, and if not that, like, what can you bring? What can you give? What can your organization do if you're in that kind of a role? How can you help drive the future success of the project and um, write it down in a post and note? And these you get to keep, and I'm hoping people might share some things, but you'll get to keep them. And if you need ideas, there's all kinds of ways to get involved. Hopefully you got a sense of that from, you know, everything from have a conference. I, I can tell you one of the takeaways from this conference for me for hosting was getting some of my libraries here. And I really did try to get a lot of my libraries here and I noticed who showed up. And the thing about having them in the room was one of the directors said to me, um, when can we have hold groups? And I'm like, oh, that's something that you want. Cause I'm thinking, gosh, that's a lot of time for the staff. That's a lot. And they're like, so excited. <laughs> so like for me, I'm like, okay, I'm telling that to Joan, who's going to be dealing when we get to that version, that release version, um, put that in your, you know, back pocket. And then there's Worcester who, um, attended the Pines play presentation and came up to me and said, we are so doing this. We are so excited because they were manning the Zoom and they were like hearing development talks that were like, what? And then they got, and then they heard an end user kind of, and I was like, okay, uh, I was in the A room and I have no idea exactly what the, and I don't know if I should thank Pines or be really scared, but we'll be, we're going to be looking at that. <laughs> but that's what happens, like getting those, you know, getting your members excited and hearing from them um, and then having them see like a bug is a part of software. A bug isn't a bad thing. Like that's how, that's what happens when you build software. There's always things that need testing, always things that come up like a it's not like there's that buggy and then there's that vendor and there's all these things that are just, you know, um, different in open source and part of the software process. If they've never been involved in a development cycle, like they seem scary and bad. So, you know, having them at the table is, has been just really nice. I mean, you are going to get things, unfortunately, like <clears throat> TikTok, but, <laughs> but anyway, so take some time, um, 10 minutes and I probably talked. Yeah, we're still good. 1140, take some time write some down, really dig, you know, dig deep and see what you can do, but realistically, because we don't want to burn you out either. And we know how much is going on, on your plates and in your jobs and in your lives. So 10 minutes. Listen to Kathy tell you to listen to Jeanette. <laughs> Kathy, can you come to my house? <laughs> Does anyone want to? Okay. So I will share, but then I'm going to walk the mic around. So be ready. Um, I am excited about doing some wiki cleanup. I already have a wiki login. And so I will be able to reach out to dig and and see how I can help and do some wiki cleanup. And since I'm on the board, I'm also going to look at the governance pages because some of those are real old. Okay. Who's up? <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to work on uh, integrating the documentation into the uh, staff plan. So uh, I guess <laughs> yeah, you, you want to say something? All right, um, so I have a, a very short uh, term uh, thing of um, getting some, uh, since I've succeeded in uh, picking up Ben Trump's uh, brain, I will be, uh, take uh, the contents of his uh, brain uh, regarding translations, um, do a bit of uh, a write up so that uh, we can find uh, a translation uh, ranker and there's already a potential not me volunteer in our uh, mind. Um, but I think also more broadly, um, you know, you know, I recognize that somewhat to uh, my uh, surprise, but not a complete uh, surprise. You know, I've um, you know ended up uh, my cats have ended up uh, ended up uh, being another topic of uh, conversation. Um, one of uh, the things I will be working on is you know shedding uh, some of uh, the hats uh, that uh, I'm uh, wearing. So I forgot to mention this uh, during my uh, development update uh, presentation, but. That will actually be the last one uh, I will be giving. Um, it will be something that I will be explicitly um, looking for new faces, uh, new people uh, to take uh, that on. Now, I'm not going away. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yeah, I 
you know, uh, ha, you know, I have a, uh, have at least uh, another you know twenty years before retirement, if even I'm uh, permitted uh, to uh, retire. But um, you know, but I think collectively, there's you know, of course, also the general issue of there's a lot of stuff locked up in the heads of long time, uh, time uh, project uh, regulars that need to be um, made more explicit and written and out there. So. Anyway, but um, that's not actually on me uh, to uh, do. So, all right, who is our next uh, lucky uh, winner? Hi there, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jason Stevenson. I'm gonna commit to trying to review one patch a week. If that doesn't work out, I'll do two. I will, no, I mean two weeks. But we'll patch every two weeks. <laughs> All right. I don't know, but I think I feel Mitch Hedberg showing up. Um, I'll take one of Galen's hats. Whatever hat he wants to give me. And speaking of intentional abandonment, we've started having a conversation about that, and I'm going to try and continue it online with the other developers. Um, this may affect release schedules may affect wiki stuff but we've got a lot of things to figure out what we need and what we don't need and where we're spending time where we don't need to so uh, i'll take that on to lead that discussion uh mine was a little more institutional in that i um and i already told them this yesterday but <laughs> i'm gonna make sure that um we block off time uh, specifically on our calendars to work on evergreen stuff because it is part of our jobs. And at least I am one of those people that like feels guilty about doing the community work. And so, yes, so blocks of time to actually do things. Mine, mine is more warm and fuzzy because I'm exhausted um, and at my limit now. <laughs> um, but I, looking around this room, I know like 99% of you and have known you all for many years. But what I wrote down is, um, is help the new people. That's because I have been part of this community since 2008. I think it was 2008. Um, some of my dearest friends are in this room or were in this room and had to go catch their plane, Ruth. But if you're a new person and you don't know me, my name is Andrea Bunstein. I work at Equinox. And before that, I worked for 10 years at a tiny rural evergreen library in Maryland. And I put my email address on this sticky note that it's going to go up on that board or come get me or get my card. And if you're new and you want to talk to somebody, come talk to me. Like I, I can tell you the ropes. I can fill you in on some of the nicer gossip. Like if you're a new person in this community and just want to know how we roll, come talk to me. Anytime, seriously. All right, Andrew's inspired me. I'm going to uh, I'm going to sign up for another meeting. Um, I'm going to I'm going to commit to um, being there for the new devs meeting whenever I can. Uh, whenever my work other work doesn't conflict. Um, let's get, uh, let's get some people trained up. Hello, you may or may not know my name. You certainly don't know my face because all of my profile photos are these unicorn sneakers. Thank you. Uh, my name is Angie. I work in Emmaus, which is part of the Pale Spark. Nobody knows what we mean when we say those words, but I have agreed and I have enlisted some friends and we are going to take Cirque by storm and we're going to get a group and it's going to be amazing. And you will all participate because that's what we do here. We're a community and we're going to grab all those front end users and the people that aren't developers and don't code and don't know tech and whatever. We work in libraries or we work for libraries. And what do libraries do? We circulate. So we're going to do it. It's going to be great. And you will all participate. Hmm. 
please don't make me drop the mic. Really? No. <laughs> I'm going to walk it up to the podium. Remember what we said about new community members and <laughs> anyone else want to say anything? Help her with the mic. Okay. So take those post-it notes home with you, write it down and put it in a safe place. And then hopefully maybe our next potential meeting, sorry, I'm getting back to the front. Um, we can see how we did. But honestly, we are recording this. This will go out to the community. And I'm hoping for those of you that are watching this um, after the fact that maybe weren't able to be here, I'm hoping that some of this resonates with you and that you also join. And maybe we'll have to do some fun little incentives, a ribbon, I met my goals. I don't know. We can come up with something, I'm sure, because just based on the idea power in this room. But um, thank you, everyone, for being here and for all that you do and um, safe travels. And I think we do still have a, li a little bit of time for you to you know, socialize and talk and all the good things about being in person. So thank you.